Hello, my name is Sarah Kazemi, and I will be walking you through the Module 3 lab, Deck of Cards. This lab has a total of four phases, and each phase is important because it allows us to test each class that will comprise your entire program, in isolation, to ensure that each class works as intended before they interact with one another. I'll be discussing how our program will ultimately work by the end of the final phase, Phase 4. Here's a UML diagram for the three classes that make up our program. Card deck, and hand. Both the hand and the deck classes are in a has a relationship with card, which means that both an object of the deck class and an object of a hand class can have zero or more cards. Notice that a member of the deck class will store its card in a private instance variable, an array named cards. Hand class will store its cards in a private instance variable named my cards, also an array. A card is defined by its value, which is a character, and its suit, an enum that we will create as suit. Additionally, card will be defined by whether or not it is a valid card, a Boolean value stored in its instance variable error flag. The value of this instance variable will be determined by a private method is valid, which will be called when we construct the card object by way of the mutator set. In addition to the public accessor methods, we will also override the object class toString method so that we can display a card's value and suit. We'll also define an equals method to check to see if two cards are equivalent, meaning that they have the same value and suit. I will discuss the relevant methods belonging to the other two classes, deck and hand, as I explained the flow of execution of our final program created in phase four. Here is our basic flow of execution. First, we get the number of players by asking the user to enter a number between one and 10. We will want to reprompt them if they do not enter a valid number. Otherwise, we can proceed to instantiate a single pack of a single pack deck object. We can use the zero argument deck constructor to do this. The constructor will create an array of cards with a length of 52, and it will continually instantiate card objects for the length of this array, storing a reference to each card object into sequ sequential indexes of the array. This will be done for both master pack and for cards. Once the deck is created, we will create a hand object equal to the number of the players that the user had entered. This can take place in a loop, which will only terminate once we have surpassed the number of players. Now that we have our deck and our hands, we will deal one hand to each, we will deal one card to each hand until the deck is empty. When we deal, we want to create a copy of the card that is a new object with the same instance values in the hand. The card in the deck and the card in the hand should be equal but not aliases. We also do not alter the deck. We will simply keep track of which index we are in the deck and conclude that the deck is empty once we have reached the end of the, deck, the deck's card array. Once the deck is empty, we will display each player's hand by printing out each card object using our overridden toString method in each hand's array of cards, named my array. In our final test in phase four, we will do the same thing with one addition. We will shuffle the cards before we deal them. Here is a shuffle algorithm that uses swapping. We simply traverse the entire array of cards and we will swap each element in cards with a random element in the same array. 